One of the most interesting discoveries uh, in electrochemical dynamics um, that I, at least from in my opinion, in, in recent years, was the discovery uh, by a group at Stanford of uh, Juan Santiago, Alimani, and Tom, and Tom Zangle, that in response to a large current being passed through a, a microchannel, in that case they were uh, having the current go into a nanochannel, but it might as well have been a current through a membrane. The nanochannel or membrane serves to be a selective surface that only allows one type of ion to pass and not the other. So for example, the cation or positive ion may go through the end of this dead end channel while the anion or negative ion goes the other way as you pass a current. Now normally that process, as it's been understood for you know, more than a century now, has been thought of as a process of bulk diffusion because roughly speaking, positive and negative ions like to be in equal quantities. So in other words, syst electrochemical systems like to be neutral as long as you have mobile charges. And so if you have neutral species, then the way that the concentration profile evolves is simply by diffusion. And diffusion is a very uh, gradual, smooth process. And so if you are removing positive ions at a surface and the negative ions have to go the other way, so you're depleting the salt concentration, then we should have a gradual uh, sort of variation of salt uh, going away, dominated by diffusion. And what was discovered in this work was that a sh very sharp gradient or jump in concentration of salt formed between very low and very high, and a constant current, that sharp boundary propagated while staying sharp as if it were a shock wave. So a shock wave is an example of a nonlinear phenomenon that occurs uh, when you hit a material very hard. So if you take just like shock wave in a gas, if you have a tube full of gas, if you hit it very weakly, you get a gradual slow uh, motion, a wave-like motion, which is, which is basically sound. Uh, but if you hit it very hard, then there's sort of like a wave breaking phenomenon, like a wave on the beach that wants to kind of tip over. It forms a sharp boundary, and that's called a shock wave. We're all familiar with shock waves. When an airplane flies overhead faster than the speed of sound, you have this wave breaking phenomena, and you hear a so-called sonic boom, where you have a, a sharp jump in pressure and density of gas, which is, in that case, is a classical shock wave. So in this case, it was discovered that shock waves can also arise in the concentration profile of salt and electrolyte. And to me, that was a surprise. Uh, the mechanism for it is actually surface transport. So the electrolyte in a, bulk, in a bulk situation would not undergo this process. But because it's in a microchannel, so it has a lot of surface, the surfaces have charge. And so there is an excess of charge in the double layers, which are these thin layers of excess positive charge, let's say if it's a negatively charged surface, which exists near the walls. When you apply a current through the pore or through the channel, then in addition to the bulk transport process in the neutral electrolyte, you also have these surfaces. And those surface transport mechanisms, which includes surface conduction, that's just electrical transport in that double layer, or electroosmotic flow, which is a motion of the fluid, which is sort of driven by that double layer, those surface phenomenon exist even after you deplete the solution. So if you're, let's say, taking ions out, salt concentration is going down, as long as the surface charge is maintained, there are always leftover counter ions in the double layer, which can give you surface transport. So it's that very mechanism which leads to this sharpening of the uh, concentration profile, the shock wave. And it's also what allows you to get a so-called over-limiting current. So the study of over-limiting current in bulk systems is now decades old. It's been a major area of membrane science. It's really the question of how do you get ions to a surface faster than diffusion? Because as I said, bulk transport is dominated by diffusion. And so that's usually the limiting, uh, it sets the limiting current in an electrochemical system. That's sort of the classical picture. But somehow when you're in a confined channel, you're not subject to those classical laws, and you can get over-limiting current. And that has interesting practical applications, because you can now drive a larger current. And also, you get this interesting sharp jump in the concentration profile. And so I've been interested in, in that area, and have contributed to generalizing that theory from microchannels to porous media, and also in applying that, cons the, the, that phenomenon to some interesting engineering problems. So in particular, uh, I've been looking at what I call shock electrodialysis as the first example of sort of more generally what I, I like to call shock electrochemistry, which is just electrochemistry in situations where you drive large enough currents to generate these shock waves in the concentration uh, conductivity. 
So uh, in electrodialysis, that's a classical method for desalination of, for example, water. And what it is, is you have a stack of membranes, which are material materials that selectively pass only positive or negative ions. So, and what they are is basically a large counter charge in a dense porous material, you could say. So for example, a cation exchange membrane is a, is a strongly negatively charged material that only positive charges will want to go through. The negative charges will not want to go into a material which is strongly negatively charged. So when you pass the current through this stack of membranes, you have a cation exchange membrane and ion exchange membrane alternating. Then in one channel, you have the positives going out one way, the negatives go out the other way, so you deplete the salt. And in the neighboring channel, you have the positives arriving and the negatives coming from the next one, and you increase the salt. So you basically t flow water between this stack of membranes, and you have basically a decrease in one channel, increase in the other channel, and then you split that off, and, and then you thereby separate the salt. So that's actually a method for uh, salt removal and, and other the brine concentration, other interesting applications used today. It's called electrodialysis. So how would we uh, improve on and modify that sort of process using this uh, shockwave phenomenon? Well, the way to do it is to uh, basically create a deionization shock in a porous material. So for example, we've done this with a porous silica glass uh, fritz, or, but you can use lots of other materials. You drive a current through that layer, and now instead of having alternating membranes, we can just have the same type of membrane uh, just at every layer to simply generate depletion. So we can have just, let's say, a cation exchange membrane sandwiching a layer of porous material, which is negative, a weakly negatively charged. So I also now call that a leaky membrane. And what we do is we drive a current through the system, just like electrolysis, but now instead of doing the separation at the, the sort of physical membranes, we form this shock wave in the concentration profile in the middle of the channel. So it's sort of a membraneless separation in the porous medium. And then we have a cross flow and we split the flow as it emerges from the porous material sort of ahead and behind the shock wave. And so this offers some new opportunities for separations uh, because we're not actually using membranes directly for separation and the motion of ions and charged particles going through a porous material in the presence of a deionization shock is a very hard problem, which I see as the, at, at the frontier of theoretical electrochemistry. So we frankly don't even know what are the equations to write down to model that system. It's not to say we don't know the equations. If you zoom into one pore, yes, we know how to write down the equations in that pore. But what I'm really talking about is a common theme in, 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 in much of my work and what I see as the, really the forward frontier for the, this field is that just because you understand the dynamics at the nano or molecular level doesn't mean you understand what's happening at the intermediate scales. And in this case, the shock wave is an intermediate scale phenomenon. And so the question is, what is a simple, relatively simple set of equations that you could solve on a computer without having to resolve every ion and every pore in a porous material? And so when I say we don't know the equations, that's what I'm talking about. We have a set of equations, which I've developed um, uh, for that kind of problem, but uh, it's imperfect. It doesn't properly take into account flows that can arise in the material and different kinds of dispersion and diffusion phenomena and electrohydrodynamic phenomena. So I think an interesting frontier of research, in fact, is to develop a theoretical understanding of leaky membranes or porous media, which are subject to large currents. So the shock phenomena is just one of many possible nonlinear behaviors uh, that could occur for electrochemical transport in a porous material. I mentioned the application to water, uh, water treatment and shock electrodialysis. I'm also in my lab and also in my theoretical work trying to develop an understanding of what I call shock electrodeposition. When you, let's say, take a, a dissolved metal, so for example, copper or lithium ions in a solution, and you deposit them electrochemically onto a surface, that's electrodeposition, to make the, the, the solid metal. So for example, think of lithium metal or copper. Then that growth process is notoriously unstable. So under conditions of high current where you start to deplete the salt, you find that this flat surface, instead of growing kind of smoothly and uniformly, it sort of breaks up into little fingers called dendrites. This is a major problem in many processes. So if you're electroplating, for example, you want to put a metal on a bicycle wheel, you obviously don't want little fingers sticking out. You want a nice smooth coating. Also, in batteries, 
the perfect anode material for a lithium ion battery is in fact pure lithium. You can't get a higher energy density than that. It's very, very uh, uh, negative uh, potential. The problem is that if you want the system to be rechargeable, you have to essentially electro-deposit lithium ions onto lithium metal that's unstable and leads to dendrites, which will grow and short-circuit the cell and even lead to uh, thermal runaway or exploding batteries that some of us have heard about in the news. So it's a very important process to understand. Coming back to the motivation uh, I originally gave of how do you control transport and look at the nonlinearities in porous media, Something I'm interested in right now is electrodeposition in porous media under conditions where we generate these shock waves in the concentration profile. And there are early indications that, uh, both theoretical and experimental, that when you go to high currents, if the metal is growing in the right porous material with the right microstructure, the right surface charge, that actually you can stabilize dendritic growth and lead to a more uniform deposition and dissolution within that porous material. And so that could have lots of interesting applications. Uh, but what I want to emphasize here is really the science of that kind of a system. Like I said, we essentially don't know the equations that we should solve at the macroscopic scale to describe that system. So we're not really even in a position to sort of rationally engineer such a system. If we'd like to design the perfect you know, porous metal anode, for example, for a battery, we don't even really know how to do that right now. And so if I look forward and say, where is this field going to be in 10, 20 years, I think the work that we're doing now in identifying sort of strong nonlinearities in electrochemical systems will have uh, lots of opportunities to grow in terms of both theoretical and computational modeling, uh, developing sort of better intermediate scale or mesoscopic models, and also in terms of experiments and applications to test those models and apply them to important uh, societal problems in, in using electrochemical systems.